Welcome to another OCD Recovery Instagram Live. I'm going to be doing question and answers on here. For those of you who have any questions relating to your OCD, just put them in the bottom um, along here in the comments section and uh, I will answer those now uh, live. I think what I will do though is I'll start on a brief topic and so I'm not just doing questions and answers today uh, and I'm going to talk briefly about ROCD and relationships and what it's going to make you feel like doing. With ROCD, it's always going to make it feel like there's a call to action. So it's always going to say there's something that needs to be done. So it's always going to say you need to suddenly leave, uh, you're fake, you're false, you're living a lie, you need to change. And it's going to make it feel absolutely imminent that it needs to be done. And in reality, that is not the that is not the case. Even if you had fallen out of love with them for the last 10 years, you don't have to leave this second. Even if they had problems that you think are you can't override, uh, people, do, oh, people do live with people with problems. Otherwise, no one with any problem would be in a relationship. OCDs, our OCD is going to specifically look for things like, what if they are uh, an alcoholic? What if they're aggressive? What if they're sexist? What if anything it can look for? So what you need to realize, and pretty soon on, is that it's going to be diving for all of this kind of stuff. So it's about being aware that that's its nature. That's what it's trying to do. Uh, so that you don't just dive when it, when it suggests these things. It's going to do that. And you're going to think, oh my God, how did I not notice this about this person until this point? And it's going to exaggerate that and make it feel 10 times worse. So you're going to have a situation where you're going to look at the person and you're going to think, God, I don't even love them at all. Uh, I've got no feelings for them whatsoever. Uh, it's going to make you think things like, oh, when I kiss them, it feels like just kissing a wall. When I have sex with them, I'm just not even connected. It doesn't turn me on at all. Uh, it's going to do all of those things. And the key is not to sort of bolt and run away and try and escape it. Expect this is part of the journey. This is what it's going to do. This is what's going to happen with it. Uh, and and that, that's vital. That's very, very important. Uh, other things it's going to do is want you to talk to your friends about your relationship. Oh, what do you think about my relationship? What do you think about him? What do you think about her? Do you think that this is too much? Do you think I should leave? How do you feel towards your husband? How do you feel towards your wife? And that is all a confession reassurance that's getting you absolutely nowhere. So you want to cut all of that stuff out because doing that with your mum, with your friends, with anything is going to is going to be is going to be an absolute nightmare cycle. Uh, it, and worse still is these uh, Instagram accounts that go into all about relationship feelings and how to know if you really love your partner, how to know if you're so connected to your partner. And that takes you down an absolute rabbit hole, completely off track, completely uh, makes you more stuck than before, uh, trying to analyze and trying to work out. You do not want to be trying to work out how in love you are. You've got to accept that whatever you feel, you feel, however you feel when you kiss them, however you feel when you have sex with them, just leave those feelings there. You don't need to analyze, work them all out. They just are what they are. And when you can get comfortable with feeling numb, feeling no feeling for them and everything like that, that's where you're moving towards recovery. And, and that's key uh, because far too often what happens is people think the absence of anxiety indicates that they're in danger or that something's wrong or something's not right. And that's not the case at all. The absence of anxiety is no indicator of wrongdoing, being harm OCD, for example, or no indication of uh, uh, loss of connection or loss of love just because you're not anxious. It's irrelevant. Anxiety is not an indicator. Um, so I think that's key. Uh, and what other things did I want to mention about ROCD? Oh, the other thing is You've got to go with uncertainty, not knowing. People try and bolt down and like, okay, well, when am I going to know if I love them? When am I going to know? And you, you, that's the problem. It's that, that, that drastic chasing uh, to find out if you love them, if you're connected to them. And that's what gets you in this bloody cycle. So, so what you want to do is you want to ease off on that and think, well, okay, I'm going to be stuck for a little while. I might be stuck for quite a while. I might not know if I love them. I might be living a lie. 
Uh, I might actually be in a relationship where we're not compatible. We're not the best together. Okay. But then when you get to a point where you're no longer scared of it, now I'm not just saying where there's no anxiety because that will trick you. I'm talking about when you're no longer scared of it at all. When you're no longer scared of it at all, that's when you'll be able to see it clearly. So say for me, for example, with me, if I'm in a relationship, I can tell whether I love them or not because I don't, I'm not terrified of if I didn't. Uh, but if I was terrified, it would pull it away. The same as with HOCD or harm OCD, where the person thinks that what if they're gay, they're not going to be able to tell if they're gay, they're going to feel gay, they're not going to be able to, then it, it's, it's that cycle because you're trying to escape a feeling. Once you try and control the sort of internal weather in your head, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. You can't control that. You can't control those sensations, the same as you can't control your heartbeat and so on. So I think... That's an important point that I wanted to mention in relation to ROCD that often doesn't get covered. Um, and I think it's crucial uh, that, that it's, I've, well, I've said it's crucial about five times because it is so important um, for people when they come in to see me with ROCD. ROCD and POCD are probably the two most common uh, OCD thoughts, themes, as we call it, um, for OCD. So I did want to give that a bit more attention. I will do a really long ROCD video soon covering it in all different details. I'm gonna start outlining all the different themes and how to approach them and all the different things that are involved in them. So that will, that will take, me a, take me a while to put together, but I'll, I'll, I'll do it on the YouTube channel. I'll go through each theme individually. Now let's have a look at some of these questions. Does OCD give dizziness in the head? Yes, it can. OCD can give dizziness. It can give a range of anxiety symptoms. So it can give anything like that. So it's, the, uh, it's learning to accept that and wear it like an uncomfortable coat, not trying to rid yourself of it. How to deal with insomnia? Well, with insomnia, it's to do with fear that you're not going to... Uh, the, the, problem, the, the situation there is fear that you're not going to be able to sleep. Uh, fear and then trying to internally control sleep or fear that you're not healthy if you don't get enough sleep and so on and so on so it's going to go down that path uh, so so I think I think I have a video on sleep uh, on my YouTube I'm pretty sure I do uh, if not if you scroll down this page I think it's in the IGTV section or further along down the page I go into sleep in detail all about the sort of the chase for sleep and how to get how to how to get a better night's sleep uh, it's usually uh, sort of shown wrongly on most medical websites about get a good sleep hygiene, get your bed all ready, go to bed earlier, put on, uh, have a nice hot bath. There's a load of things to control it, all right? Having good sleep, going to bed and waking up time is important, but it's the amount of control those those things do that then you're trying to control and it slips through your fingers. You've got to give up control to fall asleep. Um, and we cover that. I, I, I work with a lot of people with sleep, uh, sleep uh, insomnia and, and sleep problems relating to anxiety, as did I my, myself have a lot of problems with sleep relating to anxiety, caused me, uh, I got, got in quite a sort of state at that point where I realized I couldn't, felt like I couldn't sleep at all. thought my whole life was falling apart. So I do cover that. Uh, sort of in quite a lot of detail um, because it's because it's because it's very important. It, it can, people feel very lost very quickly when sleep gets affected. Uh, suddenly they feel so drowsy. The next day they feel their whole life's been pulled away from them. They they they, they, they don't know what to do, and then then they get then they rely on meds for sleep, and then it becomes a vicious cycle. So yeah, but I will do um, more on sleep uh, in other videos uh, because it's a common question I get asked all the time. So yeah, absolutely, I'll be covering that in more detail. Can OCD mimic stuff? It is the expert at mimicking. It's going to mimic everything. Uh, save this live ROCD video. I will be saving this one. Society fuels ROCD. People have a false imagination of love. Absolutely. All these ridiculous uh, Instagram accounts people traveling the world looking like they're ecstatically in love, you're not seeing the other side of the picture where uh, he, he or her is arguing with each other all the time. They've got an addiction to, say, online porn and not enjoying the sex with their partner, which you don't see uh, in, the, in the pictures. Uh, everything you can think of that could come up in that scenario, the fact that they're in loads of debt in this traveling Instagram account they've set up, and uh, they, 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 they sort of have to stay together just for keeping the blog going and putting on the whole image, you know, million stories like that.
mom in there mentioned the Facebook group. The Facebook group is a free resource. Uh, it's, um, it's for everyone to use. Uh, some great moderators and great people in there with good knowledge of OCD. Uh, it's one of the main things that, that, that I'm working to, 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 to expand all the time as in our, on mission to change OCD worldwide. I think the groups are a great way to do that because it's free and it allows everyone to interact with each other and work together with, with ways that they can get better, um, do the reading, read the books, share information about how they're getting on and what's changing in their journey. So yeah, definitely get in the Facebook group. It's a good place to start. Sensory Motor OCD, check out my video on the YouTube channel on Sensory Motor OCD that covers that in detail and watch the video from yesterday, if you go down the YouTube channel by Paul Little, talking about sensory motor OCD recovery. Uh, it's a great video by him. Can you tell me what your Facebook is called for family and partners? It's called Family and Friends uh, OCD page. Uh, you will see it there. Um, it's, it's only just started, it's only a week old, so it hasn't got many followers, um, which is, it's only a few days old. Uh, so if you join that, it's going to be for all family and friends to interact in there. Uh, I'll be posting it, links to it on the Instagram stories, so that if you can't find it. Uh, but it's going to be a resource just so that families don't feel alone. Because for far too long, families have felt alone and they go through the journey just the same as the OCD sufferer, feeling completely isolated from everything. And so meeting other mums and dads that have gone through the same um, is, is, is going to be a, a great thing. Because they don't know where to turn to help to get their children better from OCD. They have all the same struggles as the sufferer in many ways. They don't know shall they help get their son or daughter on meds, uh, the problems with meds, the side effects, uh, how long recovery takes, what's involved in recovery, what kind of life structure, are they reassuring them, all that kind of stuff. So it's very important. And um, I think that group uh, is gonna be a, a, a good resource for that so that people can have that. People were asking me for that for a long time. So I thought it was time to get that up and going. I will be doing videos with lots of different people who, who are uh, parents of uh, people, children with OCD and talking about their journey, which will all be going on the YouTube channel as well as on this page. Uh, and a lot more video content in relation to people that are, um, who, 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 who have been, who, who have felt very, very lost in, in, the, in the journey with their children and how they, how they work to get them better and the obstacles that they faced along the way and, and what, the, what the outcome was like and how they are now and how they first found out about OCD, how they were first diagnosed, the whole story of, of, of the journey. So we'll be covering all of that. Existential OCD, if you go on my YouTube channel, there is an existential video there. Uh, it's a good one to watch, covering solipsism uh, specifically, because it's obviously one of the main themes of existential OCD, the sort of loss of connection, everyone's a robot, but it does cover the others too. Rob, can you talk more about comparison in relationships, especially on social media? Uh, comparisons in relationships, what you're doing is you're comparing to something that isn't true, uh, because nobody, you very rarely meet anyone who's been together for years and years and years. It's sort of ecstatically all over each other all the time. You don't see that too often. Uh, but in social media, you see it all the time. You see it all the time. Every relationship's like that. Every relationship is th th them being so happy, the perfect relationship, the perfect animal in the relationship with a nice dog or cat and a big cake baked in the kitchen and everyone smiling and balloons in the background saying, of some celebration thing and it's not reality it's not reality even in those cases where they are enjoying that day that's not the day every day it's the same as disney disney is always paints an amazing love story but then happily ever after because we like to believe in it but when the film ends is when the relationships have to then persist and all the troubles and the difficulties that are involved in that. So it's not like that. It's like anything. It's like a sort of entrepreneurial dream Instagram accounts, always mainly nonsense, uh, sort of hyped up and not showing the, the real struggle or, or the ups and downs and the ups and downs that continue at any part of the journey. 
Um, yeah, you know, all these things are, are, are done for, for, for the audience to, to paint a certain picture. Uh, they, don't, they don't show anything. They don't show, if you see a couple on holiday that looks the most amazing desert island or whatever and they're in some hotel or wherever they are, you don't see the problem that they had when they were checking in where they had a massive argument and he or she screamed at the concierge. Uh, you don't see uh, that one of them had terrible food poisoning and was throwing up in the bed or, and in the bathroom. Uh, you don't see that. You might see them afterwards saying, oh, we, had, we were ill and sort of looking decent by the pool with uh, a, a nice fruit salad. But it's all completely photoshopped and edited to look just how to be relatable but to be fake. It's done like that. So be very careful comparing to that. Uh, in the old days, people didn't think like that because they sort of accepted what was a given and uh, they didn't see all this comparison stuff. So you've got to be very careful with that, although it can be inspirational and it's got its benefits for sure, it can also be risky. So, so just, 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 just tread carefully with that. Schizophrenia I'll cover in another Instagram live uh, specifically. It's one of the most common ones. Acceptance requires analysis, right? Analysis then leads into the rabbit hole of obsessive. Now, this is a big mistake that people make. Uh, let me just tidy this part up. Um, what people do is this. Rationalizing is this kind of thing. Oh my God, what if I've got HIV? Okay, who did I sleep with? Did I wear a condom? Did, how do I know that was on? Uh, did I, what, have I had an STD check since? You know, that's going through trying to logically sort of bypass OCD's trap, right? That ain't gonna work. What you do is you work towards accepting HIV, making peace with HIV itself. That is rationally coming to terms with the worst case scenario. Now you do that a little bit each day or every other day till you get used to it, till it becomes what you believe and see and feel. You're not gonna be able to do that straight away and you're certainly not gonna be able to bat that off in an anxiety attack with uh, trying to sort of rationally hammer it down to sort of bolt down unconditional self-acceptance. It's a process, it's a learning journey. It's the same as if you're trying to learn French. I wouldn't try and learn French in 24 hours. I'd have to learn French gradually, bit by bit, till I got it. And I wouldn't all the time be going, have I got it fluently? Have I got it fully? Have I got it fully? And that's what causes the problem. So, so we need to watch that. Right, I think that covers all the questions. I will see you guys on the next Instagram Live. Um, I will be covering, like I said earlier, uh, different themes, different OCD thoughts, uh, and having a look at those in detail and they'll be all uploaded to the YouTube channel. And if you haven't checked out the YouTube channel, please do so, because there's tons and tons of videos on there. Uh, just using it, it's a great free resource. You've got so many questions and answers, so many different things to broaden your knowledge on OCD, which is very important in the OCD recovery journey. Uh, guys, I'll see you on the next Instagram Live, probably in the next few days. All right, see you later, bye.